Hello and welcome, this is Alistair Christie and today we're going to look at class helpers. And no, this has nothing to do with handing out textbooks or wiping the blackboard. Class helpers were added to the Delphi language with version 8 as a way to extend the .NET framework to support the VCL. This is a particularly nifty language feature, which to my knowledge is only available in Delphi. Anyway, let's take a look at how they work. Let's start, as we most often do, by creating a VCL Forms application. And I'm just going to swap to the source code for that. And we're going to add another type. And it is going to be T my component helper. And the class helper for T component. And I'm going to add one function, which is describe component, and it returns a string. So these properties, class name and name, are part of um, T, the T component. So uh, to demonstrate this, let's just add a button, a label, uh, and a checkbox. And select them all. Descend from T component, so we'll um, cast them as such, and we've got this describe component um, method, and it it looks like it's attached to T component, but of course it's not. It's part of our class helper. So if we run that, we click on our our button, and the class is button, and it's inst the instance name is button one, and likewise for the checkbox and label. What's so special about this? Well, it's allowed us to extend the T component class without modifying it, as modifying T component directly would be bad and require a good portion of the VCL to be recompiled. However, we could have easily achieved the same thing by writing a function called describe component um, and perhaps attaching it to form 6 and passing the component in as a parameter. So um, if you want to extend a class and for some reason are unable to modify the source, then um, class helpers are a good candidate. Um, let's take a look at another example. Uh, this time, let's create a new unit. I'm going to use classes because what I'm going to do strings helper equals class helper for t strings and I'm going to have two functions first which returns a string and last which also oops which also returns a string And if I count to zero, then result is blank. Else, result is the first string. And same again 
at except count minus one. So let's go back to our original form and add unit seven and add a string list uh, list box and add some items Start first. And last. This is because items uh, descends from T strings. And we've added our class helper, which adds these two functions. And we can verify that. Let's run it. Get one and four. Let's just go back to our class helper for a second. And if I try and add some uh, instance data to this and try running it, I'll get an error because I can't, I'm not allowed to add instance data to class helpers. But you can add properties. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this first method or function. Uh, into a um, property so we can get and set the first member of the string. So let's change this to property. And we want uh, read get first. So get first. We want that. And set first. Um, count equals zero. Then add. Right, okay. And to test that, let's add another button. Um, list box one dot first is assigned. Um, random okay and I'd say that works pretty well that's pretty much what I want to show you about um, class helpers as you can see class helpers extend to classes you can even do this to classes you only have compiled units for you can add methods and properties, but you cannot include instance data. There are other things like adding constructors, overriding virtual methods, class data, and seeing properties in the object inspector, which I have not yet experimented with, so we may see a part two in the future. Thanks for taking the time to watch. I hope you feel it was time well spent.